listening to episode 264 of Mida Life Radio. I'm your host, Matt Blackburn. Today, I'm interviewing Anton Fedorenko of Infopathy. When I began studying human health back in 2010, I had a strong focus on water, and I made crazy long drives to pick up spring water and well water. I tried various different water filtration devices And during that time, I was experimenting with all sorts of different energetic influences that I could impact the water with. Everything from vortexing, where I started, I used to spin my water for sometimes hours, to molecular resonance effect technology, storing water under a Nubian gold-plated pyramid, all sorts of stuff. But when I found Infopathy, I was really blown away at how tangible the change was where I could actually do blind taste tests, one that's been imprinted using the Infopathy device and one that's not. And usually, so far, it's been 100% of the time, the person could tell the difference. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about still, Infopathy basically sells this little disc, this pad, that you connect to their website. There's a database of substances that they've digitized, as Anton calls it. So they've actually made it into a signal that you can imprint into water using light and electromagnetic field. In this episode, Anton talks about the history of how he started Infopathy and how he made this discovery, the parallels of Infopathy with homeopathy, his thoughts on EMF blocking clothing, how do you even digitize substances, his thoughts on Royal Rife and PEMF therapy, and then all of the cool things that you can do with Infopathy device. And he shares some testimonials that he's received, specifically one about sensitive teeth that was really interesting. So enjoy the show. Here is Anton Fedorenko. Okay, we're back with Anton Fedorenko. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, Matt. How are you? Good. Yeah, I say back because he was a guest on the show way back, I think two to three years ago. Yeah, and, it's been uh, 2021. Way overdue. Yeah, I, I, I actually reposted our show recently as a best of because... Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've been... I, water was one of the first things that I became interested in uh, in 2010, like when I got was getting into raw veganism and I was getting into grounding, water, mm-hmm. magnetism, EMFs, stuff like that. And then I started finding over the next several years all these water devices Um Obviously, the vortexing units, you know, like uh, 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 MRET technology, and now there's little wands. I mean, there's a million water <laughs> devices out there yeah. now. <laughs> but if I had to pick one, it would be the Infopathy because it's so easy and compact and quick and affordable. And I mean, it just checks like all the boxes, right? Thank you. Yeah, that's what's our aim. Uh, I remember. At one conference, one maybe like a skeptic, I think a little bit person said, you know, yeah, as you mentioned, there are so many devices, so many things people do to water. And he said, like, no matter what you do to water, it always become like better. <laughs> you know, people like do all this like manipulations with water and somehow in the end of the day, it become like healing water. <laughs> so like, what is the magic? Yeah. But yeah, it's a lot of things about water. It's, um, I think, very mysterious. And um uh, can hide, I think, because it's in some way uh, maybe not very stable, you know, as, uh, you know, it has memory, for example, in quotes, memory, yeah, but it's not as stable of uh, like memory in the silicon, for example, <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I often tell people like filtering the water is the most important, but if you're filtering municipal water, like sometimes I visit my family in California and, you know, it's, Mm-hmm. San Diego, so it's near LA. It's a huge hub. Can't remember the population, but it's crazy. And I've 
in high school, I went to a wastewater treatment plant for my environmental science class. And it was just crazy. The amount of processing they do to the water, it was like, it was like five times the size of my house. It was just like a crazy operation. And, uh, there, there's certain things you can't filter out of the water, right? Energetically, like you just said, in the memory mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, yeah, I tell people like filter the water physically. That's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like dual deionization, carbon, KDF, mm-hmm. um, sediment and then remineralizing with corosex for magnesium um that's the filter i sell so i tell people like do that and then mm-hmm. secondarily do something to it anything i mean even if it's placebo anything's better than nothing right yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's usually more than that <laughs> yeah. yeah but i noticed with your device i mean where i'm going with all this is i'll take it when i visit california and i use it on the municipal water versus the spring water here mm-hmm. and it's like night and day like i'll drink the water without infopathy and any any imprint at all and it's just like stale or something i don't know how to describe it like it's just like flat Mm -hmm. or something like the mouthfeel of the water is like kind of gross and then i do anything 528 hertz i mean literally any imprint and it's like wow this actually tastes good now Mm -hmm. but when i do it on my spring water it's not as strong of an effect which is interesting Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe it's already at this level, so it just adds up a little bit, and the difference more difficult to notice. Yeah. So I'm kind of kind of jumping the gun, I guess. For for those that didn't listen to our first show, mm-hmm. um, describe. Uh, uh, I, I guess to start at the beginning, like how you got interested in water and mm-hmm. what you discovered, and how you started Infopathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like originally I was involved in the group when I was a student in MMPT, it's a Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. I was just doing uh, uh, biophysics, uh, a little bit interested in plants. And so it's um, not that I was, you know, had a call in to those plants. It just one time actually I saw this advertisement on the wall about um, like technological methods of ecological monitoring and they use plants to monitor how good is air and if there has pollutions etc so i was doing that work and then one professor uh invited me to the meeting when they were discussing this like memory of water uh the group what was there who doing this like kind of weird but at the same time like magical things you know is recording signals from substances and then imprinting water and then doing uh, experiments in, with biology, uh, some just physical processes in water and uh, with people, with practitioners and people. So initially, like I was attracted to this because, you know, you see maybe life sometimes as like a regular thing, you know, just like nothing magical, but this looked like magical and something worse, like spending time to, you know, to understand, to work and potentially it has all these cool applications, like especially in the medicine. Although all this imprinting process, I don't know if I mentioned last time, there is also was one group in Russia who was doing imprinting into the melt metal. They were imprinting signals into the metal and when that metal uh, becomes solid again, it uh, got like stronger and better qualities. So this this thing is not only about water, it's in general about the um, materials, I guess. But yeah, water, it uh, has a lot of biological applications. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so f- since then, it was like in 2011, so almost uh, 13 years ago, uh, project was going through different changes, through different technological changes. Now, we were basing our research on what Jacques Benveniste did. Yeah, he was a immunologist in France, and in 1988, he published his famous paper in Nature that high dilution uh, substances can uh, trigger trigger immunological response, and uh, it caused a lot of uh, like noise in the scientific community. Uh, people repeating, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. And then eventually he evolved whole this idea of high dilutions when you put something in water and dilute it many, many times. Uh, so it's almost none of the original substances present. Uh, he was thinking how it's possible that this water still remain something that affects the biological system. So he then um, went he like 
develop his thinking from electromagnetism, uh, he starts recording signals from diluted substances. So he digitized the signal, then he applied the signals back to water. The water, which didn't have any substance at all, it wasn't like dilutions uh, as in his previous experiments, but it was just pure water. He applied signal and he noticed that this water with signal from the substance also does the same effect to biological systems. So <clears throat> also then with additional scientists from Italy, uh, Giuliano Preparata and uh, Del Giudici, they developed a theory of coherent domains that under the influence of electromagnetic signals, you can create coherent domains in water that will eventually mimic the signal of applied electromagnetic field. So then uh, it, kind of give some more understanding how it's possible for water to store the signals, because theoretically, if water in the same conditions, it can store the state for many years. But in real conditions, when you have temperature fluctuations, um, like other different physical parameter changes in the environment, like electromagnetic uh, environment change, that usually doesn't last like many years. For example, uh, if you use distilled water, just pure water, <clears throat> that effect usually passes after a few hours. And if you have little like minerals in the water, like regular spring water, this effect can last in the water for three days. If you add even more minerals to water, for example, mineral salt, like Himalayan salt, uh, your water can retain the signal for 30 days. But also we recommend uh, in any case to try to shield the bottle or keep it away from electronic devices which generate those uh, electromagnetic smogs. Uh, so yeah, this is um, the theory, then you have this coherent domains in water when you and, drink it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's because the conductivity, right? Just to interrupt real quick with the minerals, that's is the effect because you're increasing conductivity. Yeah, this is uh, one's approach. Somehow it affects, uh, it's not like completely clear. Somehow there's like another um, additional theory of, actually not theory, but already practice of easy exclusions of water. And those minerals also help to form uh, exclusions on water. And which also considered to be responsible for imprint uh, storage when you apply it, electromagnetic field, the water can retain that. Yeah, like it's not completely clear yet. And minerals uh, and just salt increases the conductivity of water. It's also so everything tied to like electrom uh, like quantum explanation of water. It's not you know just molecules of water moving around chaotically, but they also undergo the um, some quantum laws. There's uh, like many different things. Like one of the stuff which is interesting, uh, for example, this. Uh, a vibrational theory of how, re how receptors uh, can interact with molecules. So classic theory, it's uh, like more like shape theory. You have specific shape molecule and then specific shape receptor. They come, uh, molecule come close to the receptor, uh, uh, combines uh, with the receptor and do some conformational changes. And there is cascade of re re reactions. So something happens in the body. Uh, but uh, from this vibrational theory, you don't need to have the same shape of the receptor, but you should have, the molecule should have specific vibrational spectrum. So when it comes close to the uh, receptor, it doesn't like come, you know, in actual contact, but nearby it's already can um, somehow affect this receptor. And there is quantum ph phenomenon called like uh, quantum tunneling. That's when you, for example, have a charged particle, like in real classical physical explanation, it's for example, cannot go through some barrier. But in, from quantum point of view, you don't have particle in one particular position. It's a position kind of spread, you know, like um, probability, high probability being this. So it's little, like little cloud pretty much. So from this point of view, you can have um, your particle jump through the barrier, something that is impossible in the classic physics, possible in the quantum physics. And um, when we think about how water affects the receptors, like one of the explanation is that this uh, water with particular signatures, electromagnetic signatures, come close to the receptor and then um, affects the quantum tunneling in the receptor. 
and that's also causing then chain of reactions. So that's like a theory how imprinted water can mimic the molecule. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so so detailed because I've had shows on on water devices and stuff, and and I love all of them. I think anything you do to water after you filter, it's awesome and helpful. Mm -hmm. But what blows my mind about your stuff is it's so scientific that you're not just talking about it in nebulous terms. You're going into detail of how all this stuff works. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, sure. it's always been a question like how it works because it, the whole technology more like experimental. Starting from the beginning, you know, that Benveniste, he developed it just by pretty much accident. Uh, he wasn't even going to do the experiments with high dilutions, but then some person who was from homeopathic world, I think he was his friend, he kind of told him just like, please try these experiments. He's like, nothing going to happen because less substance you have, less reaction you will get. But uh, he was like pretty surprised when he saw that with high dilutions, uh, you can still get uh, intense reactions. Hmm. Yeah. Are there parallels between what you're doing with infopathy and just traditional like homeopathy? And the level of uh, water, because there here we have uh, water, so phenomenon is the same, whether you mm -hmm. imprint it with a signal or whether you imprint it with a substance. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. not imprint, but you know, put substance and do the dilutions. Mm -hmm. Because when you have substance in the water, the substance also has its own structure, electromagnetic spectrum, and at quantum level, they still like interact um, like water, you know, everything like it's energy in some way. So uh, when we imprint, we have that signature as electromagnetic field, as photons interacting with water. And when we do high dilutions, we have substance which interacts with water doing its imprinting. Oh. Yeah, but everything wow. kind of goes to the electromagnetism and like quantum electrodynamics of all these interactions. Yeah, so in the end, you're kind of getting the same thing, but the way of how you like prepare water is just different method. Yeah, it's wow. uh, like digitized way. Wow, that's interesting. It's almost like the exact opposite when you're taking those little tablets. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, like what we like with a new device, uh, we pretty much increase the intensity of the signal, which we're, we're like um, playing with for some time, because in our original research, when we were doing with um, imprinting water versus applying the signal directly to mice, we found that drinking water, imprinted water, was more efficient than applying signals to mice. So we're thinking maybe it's um, you know because skins and organs and all this some like outside layers of mm -hmm. well, like water in the body like uh, some outside tissue uh, doing some uh, sh uh, shielding the signal which is true especially with a little bit higher frequencies like very low frequencies it's not shielded it's just going through the body a little bit higher frequencies it can be shielded by skin also, I was thinking about to make this like short video, like take a chicken skin, you know, and uh, put them on headphones, which emit EMF, and then record signal coming to show that uh, skin can shield um, at least some portion of the EMF. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we're thinking what problem and then just increase the signal intensity, not too much, we actually increase it about uh, two times the intensity and now um, it will be also more experimented and worked, but um, we expect similar efficiency from drinking water and applying imprint ICs, those one recorded from substances, directly to the body. Wow. <laughs> yeah, with, with this uh, new device. You, you made a good... Uh... Yeah, I definitely want to get into the new device in a little bit after <laughs> just laying groundwork. I love that you said that skin blocks, uh, you said low frequency EMF, but not high frequency. Uh, actually, high, high, uh, the higher frequency, the more it blocks. Okay, yeah, it blocks so that. for example, even like microwaves, you know, if you put your hand in, in the microwave oven, the external like layers will be hit up. I mean, you shouldn't do that, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, external layers will be hit up. It's, it doesn't mean it doesn't affect the body, you know, because skin is also part of the body. It's not good mm -hmm. for the skin, but yeah, it may not go deep into the tissue, like megahertz, even like 500 kilohertz already will be not too much going into the body. It's a bit partially shielded. Uh, but yeah, still like skin will be affected 
Bezos. So, yeah. Cause, which cause, is also not not perfect. Because <laughs> the the new device is Bluetooth, and I I try to always take a really balanced perspective. Even if I go extreme for a little bit, I bounce back. And where I'm at with Bluetooth devices is, I have I love my Apple AirPods Max. I don't wear AirPods for longer than an hour or two, but I have friends that told me. Yeah, yeah. When I go to the gym, it's so much more convenient now to wear my AirPods, and I just don't sleep with them. You know, I don't wear them all day, <laughs> and that's to me like a very low stress, balanced perspective. Than like EMFs are killing us if we apply them for thirty minutes, our brain is cooked like an egg. You know, it's mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> you should not kind of use them for for this. Actually, yeah, we're from uh, one of our community person also like make us pay attention to emfs and like headphones immediate and uh because we'll be using the bluetooth in our device so we get all this like measurements done with uh, airpods uh, like for some first generations and then just other different headphones and then our device and uh, we made our device first of all like emit actually when we put the device to the measuring it's actually even shows lower measurement than just background. Wow. Yeah, I guess it's uh, just some like external electromagnetic field issued by the electronic board. But okay. uh, yeah, if you compare them to some headphones, it will be like thousand times uh, lower EMF. It's uh, by the regular device, measuring device, you're not gonna even like um, measure those high frequencies coming from Bluetooth. But for but, but for those one who is like very very sensitive to Bluetooth, yeah, uh, device still have audio cable option, so you can still just connect it to uh, with audio cable, and uh, we also added option to completely power off the Bluetooth module in the device. Uh, yeah, when you turn on device, you can hold it for like button for 10 seconds and will power off the Bluetooth completely. So if you just want like non-Bluetooth version of the device completely, then you can do that. But, but from your research, it, and it seems to get complicated, <laughs> the difference between uh, imprinting with a wired connection versus imprinting with Bluetooth, are you saying there's no difference from what you've yeah. seen with your new device as far yeah, as like... yeah. because also we have a different device IC Hammer which you use Bluetooth mm-hmm. uh all only Bluetooth there is mm-hmm. no difference because also Bluetooth I mean it doesn't have effect on the imprint itself mm-hmm. it, it may be on, only affect people who like very sensitive to mm-hmm. uh, high frequencies but on water imprinting doesn't have effect because frequencies of imprinting are up to 20 kilohertz so it's very low f- uh, range and Bluetooth, it's like uh, megahertz, like a s- million times more, like higher frequency than that. And the bands that usually like don't interact, you know, how you can switch when you drive a car, you can switch between different uh, frequencies, uh, different frequency bands, which are like relatively far from each other, they don't interact with each other. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah when I, I, I sell, uh, vitamin C and I used to be anti-ascorbic acid and now I love it um, because there's just endless research on it. And it's fascinating that vitamin C is, is concentrated quite a bit in the skin as well as throughout the body everywhere, but in the skin, especially, and it does have an EMF mitigation effect with seemingly Mm -hmm. some quantum properties. So I'm a huge fan of just using nutrition for EMF mitigation, Mm -hmm. like zinc, selenium, magnesium, I mean, you could yeah, go down the list. There's so many nutrients that yeah, yeah. clinical studies. I think yeah, vitamin that... C is like a very interesting thing. It's, uh, yeah. it's, I think it's, yeah, maybe even most popular <laughs> like vitamin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, in our first show, you explained how you digitize sub- substances, mm-hmm. and uh, that that's something that's fascinating to me because uh, I think on your website you have an article on Royal Rife, and I have mm-hmm. a resonant light rife machine here and i love it that it uses rf with a plasma tube and i have multiple plasma devices here i just love that uh delivery system um but uh it's really tangible like when i had COVID or whatever that was i used these programs and i feel like it was like a pivotal part of my healing um so it's really really crazy that the effect of frequencies and Years ago, when I went to Sedona, Arizona, I went, I think I went upstairs in someone's apartment and they had these crazy, it almost looked like a, 
like an arcade like pac-man kind of setup <laughs> but he had like all these switches and knobs and stuff and <laughs> we walk into this loft area and they're like yeah it's our frequency device and we're like can, friend and i were like can you fire it up and they did and we're like we feel like we're suffocating we literally had to go outside because it was so intense <laughs> <laughs> and that was like when i was thinking wow these this frequency stuff it's it's really strong <laughs> like you could feel it a lot but um going back to my question like i i think i remember in the first show you were talking about how do you send like light through a substance and then you see what it blocks or absorbs one of the two and that's how you yeah yeah i think it was more like analogy it was light okay. uh when we yeah because it's an analogy when you uh, yeah go to like dark room and you would like to make a picture or something and everything around us even it's like material that's how we see it it everything also you know atoms molecules and all of the things have that's all in shape electromagnetic spectrum if you see white color it's because uh, everything like reflected if you see blue color everything absorbed by just blue wavelength is reflected and you can see blue and um yeah if you have go into dark room you're not going to see anything and uh, to see something you need to have uh, like a flash of white white light then you capture it so similar um ideas here but instead of white light we use like white noise also up to 20 kilohertz we shoot it through the substance from one side it goes through the substance usually diluted in the water or some solution with the water uh, depends on the substance so it goes pretty much through the petri dish with the uh, diluted substance and on the other side we have a coil which captures the resulting signal so and that resulting signal then processed analyzed and uh, like some parts amplified and uh, cleared and that's how we get like a substance and now actually we also besides this is um, like actual uh, approach in you know, a physical when we do actual substance and now also um, learning methods of uh, um, pretty much calculating the frequencies of uh, some molecules it's it's because we cannot like maybe get we have so many list wish lists from people i think uh, over like a couple hundreds probably some substances we just uh, cannot get and it stimulated us to go and start studying all this computational chemistry where you would uh, take any substance and then you can uh, calculate vibrational frequencies of the molecule of different uh, range also it's because it's, it can be not only like oscillation when the whole molecule oscillates it can be rotational frequency and uh, many different uh, transition of electrons from different levels it also has its own uh, level of uh, like modes of frequencies so mm -hmm. there's many things we a little bit in the beginning of all this uh, computational approach but uh, we were interested in like where will it bring us and how effective those like frequencies will be but if it like will work then it will be even much clearer method because when we do this white noise recording there's a lot of uh, like actual noise and very like uh, weak signal which which modulate the white noise so that should be like cleared up etc and if this thing will work with computation computational chemistry then it will be like next level i think wow wow that's really exciting right downstairs i have a book a royal rife frequency list mm -hmm. book that's like super thick and i think i've seen it published online where there's the list of all the mm -hmm. you know pathogens mostly and their mm -hmm. frequency is there are, is that like have you found a correlation with your uh readings and and the, that yeah. list or yeah with actual substances um when we record signal it's not possible to you know extract like particular frequencies because every substance is like whole spectrum it's not just like one frequency or like 10 frequencies it's um like very complex signal mm -hmm. and uh, i cannot tell like which like one or two like frequencies from here but by the way like you have i think maybe when three year ago we talked we didn't have much of those pmfs because right frequencies they are and we put them in category of pmf signals pulsed electromagnetic uh, field signals it, when we started to work i think about like maybe three years ago more intensively also adding them on the platform pretty much yeah, from that library you have uh, some like other libraries of uh, rife or pmf frequencies 
uh, because uh, device like uh, IC pad or IC hammer <clears throat> on its basis it's just emitting device you know how headphones you can emit you can not play just one song you can play like different songs on this on the headphones same way with uh, transfer devices you can play signals recorded from substances you can emit uh, pulsed electromagnetic fields and uh, like other types of signals pretty much any signals yeah so we started to add those signals to the infopathy and then uh, should be applied not through the water but directly through the body although some people experiment yeah it's a lot of things is experimental and uh, we don't restrict people doing anything so a lot of people experiment like imprinting water with pmf signals uh, it's a little bit um, like mind-boggling to understand how that would work because with pmf you usually have sets of frequencies one frequency another and another so usually when you like do imprinting with one frequency and then another the first one would be partially like uh, removed although um although that's like more most like right for imprinting signals yeah just actually now got some thought that yeah when you imprint um water with different imprint signals all of them have wide spectrum so if you have one substance then later imprint another one that will partially overwrite the first one but if you imprint signals like pmf you know they have particular values like i don't know 100, 100 hertz 200 hertz 300 hertz uh, those one may actually not be overwriting each other because again they kind of spaced out you know so it's not like 100 hertz and 101 hertz that probably will interact with each other but uh, when you imprint pmf as a set of frequencies that's that might be actually why it's still okay to do <laughs> and it works for people yeah people imprinting water with pmfs uh, some body creams interesting so i found what you said interesting that it's a that it's complex where organisms have like a spectrum of frequencies. Cause I was under the impression from all my years and I'm not an expert by any means, but just exper experiments with Royal Rife machines mm -hmm. that there's like dominant frequencies to like the tapeworm or the hookworm or whatever that they have like a, a main one or something. Yeah. For, for those, I think, um, I mean, the actual tapeworm, if you take it, it's not going to be also like one frequency, <laughs> but if you want to kind of kill it, or maybe make its life worse uh, then you it's maybe enough like one frequency or like a few frequencies you know to target particular approaches in their body or something and make it like um, a bad life for them <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah like the, yeah, the people... red machine it goes through like a series of so songs essentially and mm -hmm. for like two hours and it changes mm -hmm. yeah 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 so it's <laughs> gonna be like different processes i don't know different things yeah doing to the body but uh, if you record signal from the actual tip form that would be like whole 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 spectrum because also mm. it has so many like different molecules inside you know every have so many it's like hundred thousands probably different <laughs> things in little <laughs> worm yeah that's what's wild um you said something that was interesting that new signals will partially overwrite other signals because i know in our first show uh, we were asked the question, uh, you know, what's the max number of imprints mm -hmm. you could do in in water? And I think you said like up to six or something. And that could be a lot of your imprints like on your website. Um, uh, for the listeners, there's like a library on the InfoPathy mm -hmm. website and you pay a subscription and then you have access to you open up the website on your iPhone or iPad or laptop or whatever. And then you pick. But a lot of them like it's could be like six substances and one imprint. Um, so could you just kind of uh, mm -hmm. go into that for a second on yeah. combining? Yeah, yeah there's also like a rule of thumb because uh, sometimes it can be complex of uh, single substances or signals from single substances. Uh, and sometimes it can be like, I don't know, complex that have IC, which is recorded from mushroom. And mushroom itself, of course, also has very complex uh, spectrum and signal but uh, it's for just some simplicity so people don't need to calculate okay how complex is this substance you know so we have six it also was um, kind of experimental approach and it's not about the water not being able to have uh, like to store many signals it's about then their person 
how the body will react <clears throat> to all the signals. So on average, yeah, six or in most cases, maybe 90% cases, six uh, ICs in one complex, when person drink it, it will uh, have positive effect. But if you have uh, like many substances, there's a chance that it will not cause any effect to the body at all because it's too many signals and body not able to process it. Uh, well, I wonder in the beginning talking about municipal water, I wonder if that's what I experienced from the California water is there's just so many signals in there that, <laughs> you know i never yeah, thought about that be, <laughs> be, yeah that's that's interesting huh um and i i think you were saying so it's two minutes generally for an imprint but i think in our last show you were saying um the more you do it to a degree the stronger it gets like generally, yeah. like what three times would be a good. Uh, yeah, on average, people do it about five times. And okay. what we noticed with people imprinting, you know, they have option to imprint for infinite repeat times. So one repeat is just two minutes. For glowing path, if you imprinting, you can put infinite imprint and just let it run for one hour. And people doing like one hour, two hours, like many times. And uh, on average, it seems with current glowing pad the previous version yeah the, it's the maximized effect at one and a half hours but it also doesn't mean that at uh, so it's like 90 at 45 minutes you'll have half effect now it's initially it goes up pretty fast then it goes to the plateau so at least like um, after six minutes you pretty much will get as uh, much as half of the efficiency if you'll be imprinting for one and a half hour. So six repeats, it's good, but we always recommend to start people with just uh, two minutes because for some people, even that can be too much, yeah, especially if people do detox related signals, then uh, some report is maybe too much uh, happening <laughs> at the same time. And uh, they need even to imprint it for less time, like for one minute. Is there a certain imprint that you use uh, when you're uh, I don't want to say trying to convince people, but do like a blind taste test. Do you ever recommend a certain imprint where people can generally taste the difference? Yeah, so one of the most popular imprints and what we also recommend to do in the beginning is a happy water complex. It's also one of the popular, one of the most uh, reviewed by people and shared experience about. So they generally feel, even to people who doesn't know what's inside, what's imprinted, they can try with their family members imprinted and give them to drink and see how it felt after that awesome yeah what i think after our show i i imprinted for my uh parents and my older brother and i gave my dad like a male hormone cocktail and he had trouble sleeping that night so i felt kind of bad <laughs> <laughs> i gave him like testosterone and pregnenolone and stuff <laughs> so they were my yeah. guinea pigs <laughs> so yeah. that so the new IC pad you came out with, um, we already talked about Bluetooth a little bit. I noticed it also has red light in it. Is that right? Yeah, the first IC pad, actually, this is the third IC pad. We had the first IC pad whom nobody, nobody much, not much people knew about because we had it for a short period of time. Uh, and the previous one was number two. And uh, that one only had blue light. And when we developed it, we only were working with imprinting signal recording signals from substances and imprinting them to water what we're not doing with pmf and direct application to body and uh, that's why it had only blue light um, now when we have also a large library of pmf signals a lot of people use them directly to the body actually you have to use them directly to the body so whole is used a lot directly to the body and red light uh, is better on the body even like blue lights also has its benefits during the awake times, even like on the mood enhancement and uh, some energy levels. Uh, red light uh, generally considered to be more beneficial for direct body applications. That's why we added uh, red light and also added infrared light uh, because infrared is uh, better interacts with uh, water itself. So it's absorbed by water better and also generates that exclusion uh, zone water, which is responsible for storing ICs. In previous versions, but we had magnet, uh, which also was uh, good for increasing the exclusion zone of water, that easy water. Uh, but here we couldn't just for technical reasons include magnet because we 
kind of moved away from using that epoxy resin. And if you put just magnet inside, the device would make like a somewhat loud noise. So that's why we kind of removed the magnet and put infrared light, which is good for water. Also, it's good for direct body applications. Yeah, now it has uh, three lights, red, blue, and infrared. And uh, there is also a button on the device. When device is on, you can switch those modes, all three lights, then blue and infrared, uh, red and infrared, and just infrared. So for example, if you imprint uh, or like doing something at nighttime and you don't want any light at all, uh, it also was one of the requests from people. So you want to have more, like less, uh, less lights, then you just use infrared light and imprint it. There still will be a little indicator showing that's imprint in progress or something like transfer in progress. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. So is this, so it sounds like you can apply this directly to the body like the Hummer? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Previous okay. one also was, um, could be applied. Uh, if person like didn't like the blue light effects, mm -hmm. then they would cover lights with the fabric and still oh. apply it to the body. Yeah. A lot of, uh, like user cases when people will be applying device directly to the body and this one now it's they can just switch to the red light mode and apply directly to the body with even more benefits oh that's really cool and when you're imprinting it it does it matter which one that you have on or not not uh so too much? like gen yeah, general recommendation when you're imprinting it's uh, for the strongest imprint it all lights red okay uh, infrared and blue um or you can just use blue but yeah for the strongest it will be three lights plus uh so three, three lights and electromagnetic uh, it also has coil which emits magnetic signal but that's always on kind of thing also i want to note that infrared light uh, LED, leds you're not gonna see they're like invisible for our eyes but i like, don't think it's broken it's <laughs> i think i also saw on different like uh, red light therapy lamps they always have this uh, note that those lights are working they're just not visible for you <laughs> don't think they're broken yeah yeah so so which which part of the infrared spectrum are you doing because there's near mid and far right yeah we're doing about uh, 960 uh, nanometers so it's not okay. really far but uh, yeah that, that one Oh, that's awesome. And uh, is battery life similar or more? Or uh, so here we, um, the battery itself is twice uh, like of the size of the previous one, but because we increased signal intensity, oh. so the in general life will still be about uh, five, uh, six hours on one charge. And I think it they should work better now because in previous, like previous device was like very complicated. In general, to, to manufacture, it has all this epoxy and uh, eventually it would be caught in the battery kind of putting it in some constriction and i think that might be in some cases affecting the battery life but uh, here battery in its way as it's supposed to be like in electronic devices without uh, a lot of art happening with epoxy resin so i think it will work better that's cool well uh earlier you were talking about the water losing its signal um, and holding it either for days or weeks. Um, and when I got back into it a few months ago, I went on your website and I forget when you came out with them, but you have these uh, silver uh, kind of like basically uh, Faraday tinctures mm -hmm. and water bottles. And I love your water bottle. That's all. That's my current only thing I drink out of now. Um, and, and I think the idea is that, when if you're in especially a city or apartment or a lot of wi-fi signals and that will what kind of scramble what the imprint that you put in the water that, uh, yeah yeah you know? because uh pretty much yeah, when you expose water to any emf especially those ones from wi-fi etc even if it's again different uh, from imprinting range up to 20 kilohertz it's like usually high frequency etc it's still um you know dust to water like an effect and slowly erase the imprint that's why yeah you need to keep device away or uh, sorry imprinting imprinted water during the printing and after imprinting away from electronic devices and just to like help people you know not to be like i don't know <laughs> crazy like moving things around the water bottle uh, we made uh, this shielding cases they essentially made from silver fabric which shields um, different um, like most like radio frequencies yeah, all these wi-fi's and uh, cell like uh, 
cellular networks and uh yeah we when we were developing i think maybe one year or something ago yeah we got uh, like all the possible fabrics out there and we like pick, picked up two which actually shielding not just a little bit and uh, i mean it says made uh, from 100 percent silver like i'm not sure like how they made, how, how they made exactly from the <laughs> silver because I mean, it's fabric, but it's actually like a very interesting like area with all these conductive fabrics. And there is also conductive threads. We were like even thinking to make, you pretty much can, uh, how it's called, embroid coils on your t-shirts conduct with using conductive um, materials, like conductive mm -hmm. threads. They're not as conductive as like copper, for example, mm -hmm. but still it's conductive and you can create coils so you can create you know we have like pmf mats but you can kind of create pmf t-shirts <laughs> yeah, we're like a little bit like uh, doing some research in this area yeah and essentially this is shield in case when you imprint water bottle you can also kind of remove bottle from the case put it on the device and then put case on top so it's kind oh. of shields from shielded from the sides and from the bottom uh, device still can do the imprinting. Mm. Yeah, you don't imprint uh, when the bottle in the case because it's also shield the signal. Oh, yeah. that's a, that's a good tip. I'm gonna do that like at an airport or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you you can use that case uh, pouch when you print water. Then when you finish imprinting, you again take bottle from the case and put it in regular way. So cup is up, and then it's also important actually to close both uh, close. Uh, the mm -hmm. top of the case completely because yeah if you don't close it even it has like metal uh cup uh on the lid on the bottle it's still like uh, it's like very interesting how electromagnetic field just goes through little holes <laughs> yeah. yeah if you have like i don't know like a finger size hole and you'll be measuring uh, yeah first one of the tests you can put your phone inside of this case and you completely tightly close it and then um five seconds later you try to call that phone and it will not you will not be able to reach it because signal is shielded but if you open a little bit in this case then uh, your phone again have reception yeah so it's important mm -hmm. to close it that's cool that you looked into the silver fabric i had a um a guy on late uh recently brian hoyer uh emf mitigation guy building you know biologists kind of mm -hmm. optimizes people's homes and um he was the one that got me off of emf blocking clothing the silver clothing touching the skin because mm -hmm. he made he made a good point that you know that's attracting signals and then our skin's conductive so Contenna. it's just tra yeah and it's, <laughs> yeah and it's making harmonics was his big point of, that we don't know the effects so mm -hmm. you know as it's as it's pinging off the silver fabric it is creating harmonics that are then going yeah, yeah. into our tissues yeah, I mean, it may it may work if you put yourself like in the in the KMF bag maybe completely. <laughs> 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 to shrink yourself down to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think, yeah well he was saying like the can the sleeping canopies over the bed and like the emf tents he said he helped like mercola develop his silver sleeping bag tent thing mm -hmm. which is i guess as long as you're not touching it is the idea and then mm. if you could ground the oh, silver yeah. even better that's so. good yeah yeah that will work yeah but uh that's cool that you looked into that pmf t-shirts that would be really interesting yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah fortunately that current like um a little bit we thought to develop it but then the problem currently is that the threads are not still not very conductive so you have to have like thicker threads and that's become like um like a big thing on your t-shirt so it's not as cool as but i think yeah there will be something like that we'll be like working yeah besides this device we like already like working on the something new and but that will be not soon maybe a few years oh. from now yeah that will oh. be like ne next level <laughs> wow i'm excited <laughs> yeah, it's also it, it will be it will be involving uh, microcurrent because right now it's uh, pmf and printing audibles which you can use with headphones and uh, a lot of people in our community they have uh, this microcurrent devices which you connect mm -hmm. like you through the electrodes you connect to the body and run little currents yeah. uh, like very small currents you're not gonna even feel them but they're also very effective. So we develop a device in that kind of area. It's also will be like PMF, a microcurrent mm -hmm. thing. And are you, uh, are you familiar with Bob Beck? Uh, no. The Bob Beck protocol. He he invented like a lot of things. Uh, he he passed away, but he was like a legend. 
that uh, there's still old interviews of him on YouTube where he released ba- basically these schematics of how to build like like the original zapper, like the microcurrent device. Mm. It's called the one is called the Silver Pulsar. Was a popular Canadian company, <laughs> and I still use it to this day. Like I travel with it and stuff, and it's fifty to hundred microamperes through the radial and ulnar artery. And it's a nine volt that steps it up to 27 volts. And he basically used this patent by I think Kali or something that would they they uh with needles implanted electrodes and found mm-hmm. that it wiped out, neutralized like every pathogen, <laughs> like mm-hmm. bacterial, viral, parasite, mm-hmm. anything living in the blood. And he actually called it immortal blood, where he said you could go live blood microscopy after cleaning your blood for several weeks and you'd have mm-hmm. zero sign of stuff swimming. I've never done that experiment, but <laughs> it kind of makes sense. Um, and he found it. Yeah. It basically just deactivated every pathogen. And so when you were talking about that, that's what I think of. Cause his protocol was like four step. It was like that PEMF drinking ozonated water and mm-hmm. drinking homemade colloidal silver. That was like his four step kind of mm-hmm. for all sorts of conditions. Like, Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think electricity uh, all can <laughs> so not black. Yep. I heard if you have black cats, then you shouldn't worry about the cats crossing your path. <laughs> right. So you're you're, prote- you're protected. <laughs> they are a little spiritual protectors, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, I was curious if you'd heard about that because I I was into that back in like I don't know, twenty eleven or something. And I would even walk mm-hmm. around in public wearing it, I think, on my arm strapped and then I think, I think I tried the Terminator 2 Hulda Clark zapper. Mm-hmm. Didn't feel anything compared to this one. Um, mm-hmm. So when you're talking about what you're developing, it sounded similar, yeah. but it sounds like you could pick yeah. what's you, going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're planning also be like, um, the main idea also have device itself and then all this like library with many, many different signals oh. wow. to what you want to do. Yeah. And this will be like next level um, from technological point of view because you will be able they'll have little memory on the device, so you'll be able to kind of um, upload protocols you like. Then just don't use your phone at all. So also like you know no Bluetooth, oh, cool. no connection, like a tournaments device. And uh, one of the cool features that is like I think person for me interesting but i think for other lazy people also who like you know oh my god i need to go again and imprint water so it will have uh, this automatic repeat function so you will set it up again everything controlled through your phone connect it to the bottle the device also will be emitting not uh, yeah if you connect to electrodes will be doing microcurrent but on its own it will be emitting uh, signals so you strap it to the bottle and then it will just imprint water once in a while um as you set it up wow. you just need to add water you don't need to go again like you know to choose what to imprint etc oh. so it's a little bit like a version of smart some kind of smart model <laughs> where you just put it wow. just refill water yeah, because uh, many people it's it's very important to Im- drink and imprint imprinted water um like pretty much every i mean every day three times a day like constantly sometimes for several months just today, someone wrote uh, their feedback of they had sensitive teeth and they, they created their own complex and drinking it for two months. And uh, th- like they don't have any more sens- sensitivity in teeth when they chew nuts, but it was like big problem before, but now it helps them. And one of the reasons why it helped because they didn't give up, like, you know, in the first months, they continue doing it and they, they achieved this result. And uh, yeah, what you want to do, make it simpler. Also, for example, was make it this device wireless. Uh, besides, actually, just wireless, etc. <clears throat> it has also a strap, so you put, can put it around your neck, and that uh, you can adjust it and put it uh, position on the chest or position on the stomach or on the back. Yeah, so it's uh, now can be wired as well and uh, used for PMS. Wow. Well, that, now that I'm getting like back into gardening uh when you were talking about uh the future device like i'm always thinking of the application like i just set up a um my, my builder set up a, a koi pond filter yesterday like a bead filter <laughs> i have a 3600 gallon koi pond in the greenhouse <laughs> and i'm thinking if i just put 
one of your devices basically where the water is flowing through and that goes to the garden beds eventually mm -hmm. that I could keep imprinting that water is that yeah, correct? yeah that, like yeah that's possible, implications yeah. for for garden yeah you, yeah I can pretty much um, put it uh, you just need maybe you just connect it to the charger so it's always will be like running without draining the battery and yes um, it can be directly attached to I don't know if you have like a little pipe or something it will be yeah. always in printed water yeah you can just put it on infinite imprint if you have flowing water actually we're developing like another device for some uh, it's not like we don't plan to make it like mass manufacturing but it's kind of flow through device uh, which coils water goes <laughs> comes here comes back from here and also signals applied uh, for people who are interested in um, uh, like also plant uh, agriculture etc purposes sign me up uh, yeah for, yeah it's for like for, <laughs> lar for larger scales uh, but also like now in experimental uh, way because here water is flowing through so it's important to have like strong signal here to imprint water because we don't have like you know time to, to imprint water you know it doesn't stand in the bottle and get it slowly imprinted yeah it should be imprinted fast in this way that's exciting because currently with the ic pad i think there is at least one imprint i've seen where it's like plant growth or something mm -hmm. where yeah, you could use that for just house plants or something or... yeah there's a very popular one combination uh, is a plant growth booster I think it's like almost 50 or something people uh, reported on it, how like what's beneficial for their plants. It's home plants or garden plants. Yeah. And uh, there was also another one recently added by one developer, I think called Easy Green Thumb. Yeah, it's also like getting popularity now and uh, reported being beneficial for the plant, plant growth. So you mentioned developer uh how many developers do you have making uh, actually that one wasn't actually like a developer it was a practitioner uh, okay. so practitioners able to yeah we also, also like last year's built quite some functionality for practitioners uh, practitioner able to like the create complex and make it public so it goes okay. into main library and other people also able to use it or even if you like don't have this practitioner account if you liked some ic that you created complex you can add review to your own complex you know telling your experience and then this complex of this review with the complex will be published in the community page we developed like a community page on the infopathy where people can ask questions share their experience so that will be published there and other people can see this one uh, your complex and use it yeah you can if you only can make it anonymous so people don't know who is who you are but they just see your review and your complex and then use it yeah, so it's uh, a lot of uh, like community things <laughs> happening as well when people create and sharing. But yeah, we have developers who uh, record signals or developers that can uh, create PMF uh, programs on the InfoPathy website. We also have uh, so-called PMF synthesizer available for practitioners where you can create sets of programs, like, you know, which frequency after which, durations, all the things you kind of toggle and create the PMF protocol. Wow, that's really cool. Um, I wanted to ask you, and this is um, kind of going a little off topic, but one of the one of the products on your website mm -hmm. is, um, I think it's called, Mi is it Mind? Mind, Mind yeah, Pro? Yeah. I recently got it and I haven't, I've been intimidated. Like a, a lot of time I'll get a device and it'll just sit there for months. Cause I'm like, where's the setup video where <laughs> yeah, that's one is quite complicated. <laughs> well, I have the styrofoam. I don't know if it's, it's way back there, the styrofoam box. And that's my understanding. You like, was it ice packs? And I fill that with water and then I don't know where to go from there. Yeah. Ice packs itself is just for thermal isolation. So the whole thing should be, have as stable temperature as possible because um, the temperature fluctuation very much affects water in the readings. Uh, yeah, I think it has, it also has built in like a thermometers in each of their uh, water samples containers and it's measured like 10 power like minus five or something Celsius. Obviously, it's like very sensitive. So you put it in the styrofoam case and you have all this water packs uh, like what's called cooling packs so mm -hmm. they're also more like for temperature stabilization in the environment of the device okay. uh yeah then it can be used in different ways um 
it can be used just you can affect water with any way with anything you can affect water with some device see you know how it's react uh in the software itself you can set up different like graphics and settings uh as a lot of things uh, i usually direct people directly for manufacturer the device our partner in germany it, but the similar device was primar primarily used for our research and development of their like first IC pads and in general half signals like effect BI because I think it's the most sensitive device out there for this kind of research. It doesn't tell you you know what exactly you 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 imprinting. It doesn't say okay this is like aspirin or this is this stuff. Although they working on this, they're like building some almost like a quantum system of like wow. eight eight devices. And like perform some um, calib calibrations, tests to be able. I mean, they have idea that it's maybe possible to do that with a large system set up to identify what was like imprinted in your substance with a physical way. Because right now there is no, um, you know, like a test, simple test. Okay, this one I imprinted with aspirin. This one with like mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Uh, to understand with biological some systems, you know, to like, I don't know, affect like uh, blood with aspirin and see if it's like, coagulates faster or slower. <laughs> Those things. Wow. But uh, just uh, with uh, like physical device, no. And uh, also that device, because of its sensitivity, it's used for this consciousness research where you can. Um, for example, set up device that you look at the samples of this water, a little water samples at a distance, just in your room. Uh, and um, because device record the measurements for a prolonged time, we can record constantly. We have like one mm. now running just 24 hours a day, nonstop. And uh, you can see what was happening, uh, like for example, one hour before you start affecting device. And then you do in the session, 30 minute session, for example, you see if you are able to change the electric conductivity in your water sample. And this is also not like a huge conductivity, you know, which can be changed, of course, easily by adding some minerals or something to water. By the way, like you need to use to, uh, distilled water in those water samples. It still has like conductivity and everything, but it also affects the quantum phenomena, those quantum tunneling effects when, <clears throat> If you think about classical point of view, there should be no maybe conductivity happening between two electrodes that water sample. Mm. But um, somehow it's like also unexplained with your mind just sitting like, I don't know, away from this device, you're able to focus your attention and do some change to water sample. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's, yeah, they're doing this actually a lot of research with this device with the partners in China, and China like like very like for example, I think serious you know about the Qi energy and you know the Qigong masters, it's um, like normal you know for us it's maybe sounds sounds like woo woo, but in China it's um, like a somewhat big deal, and it's uh, perceived as their like existing and normal like, phenomena that every person have chi and they can affect things at a distance. So they have um, like big lab in China, I don't know, some university where they have this huge wall. I think it's built from concrete or concrete with metal, which shields like any like, like most possible like elementary par particles, uh, waves. And they were testing from one side, they have this device from another side, they have a uh, chi master and he doing some something, trying to affect the water sample at you know through this wall, and they can see, and they also published this, that uh, water was affected. They all see nothing was happening to water for previous one hour, and now this person started affecting at this particular time, and here we have a clear graph of how intensity goes up. Wow, yeah, that's that's so, really cool. I, uh, it's many sounds... things, yeah. Sounds like you do all sorts of experiments at home with it, like shine different near infrared light on it, uh, imprints yeah. on it, and watch watch how it changes. Yeah, yeah. Right? All, they have uh, it's called this Vernonsky scale, where it's not just a simple line, but it's uh, like a colorful representation of uh, like different uh, frequencies in the water. So it's also time. 
it goes uh, yeah. like it generates the data every like second and uh, you can see not change only in specific frequency but it varies so it's become a very beautiful like a colorful picture of your change because sometimes if you do measurements at particular frequency maybe you don't affect it but as a particular data representation uh, it's even more sensitive in that way to receive some feedback from your device yeah the idea uh, of this device i mean it has many applications and one of them is this uh, consciousness research or even uh, remote like uh, you know affecting something at uh, like long distances wow yeah. but it's a little bit tricky uh, to set up and you know it's not like plug and play thing it's um yeah like usually like labs getting them for like research and i yeah, just need some spend some time yeah i need to set up a table or something up here to organize yeah it. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, be the best way how for example usually they use it in the lab they have like a whole room just for this device oh, wow and when the everything is set up um for example if you set up with a computer you can then access computer remotely if you need to you know do some changes and don't even like try not to get and get inside so, because sometimes uh, all this yeah, change of airflow and other things it can affect but uh, it's it's need to be like experimented with it's not necessarily going to be affected but yeah, need to okay be did you ever hear of the uh Karatkov Konstantin Karatkov like mm -hmm. bio well yeah because yeah. I had all their attachments like the the Sputnik thing and then the, mm -hmm. the water probe but this yeah, seems yeah. kind of way beyond the water probe they they have. Yeah, they have uh, like very interesting work with um, what called Carlian photography hmm. of the person and uh, health diagnostic. Yeah, yeah, familiar, familiar with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, trying to remember what else I was. Oh, uh, have you had anyone uh, use imprinting for like? Um, uh, well, no, I guess we already talked about that. <laughs> I was going to say like aquaponics and stuff, but I'm still on the gardening mm -hmm. thing, thinking about all the, mm -hmm. or I guess topical baths. I guess it would just take forever, right, to imprint a, a bathtub. Yeah, for, for, for the large uh, amounts, it's, um, I mean, it's still possible. Some people did our previous device because all this like resin coating was somewhat uh, waterproof. So oh. they would just sometimes just take bath with the ice bath itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, adding some maybe salts in the water as well and yeah. uh, taking bath up. But yeah, some some people, for example, you know, they want to like imprint like hydrogen water or something like this. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, like that's like not necessarily to do. You can just imprint like regular water. Mm -hmm because anyways you're not going to be drinking like two liters of hydrogen water a day so you still have that regular water you'll be drinking so yeah. you can yeah there's things that like a path that most research and developed you know drinking like regular water with a little bit of minerals in it and there's other things that people may be imprinting uh, juices etc and that's like uh works but uh, there's so many like details about it that we in general recommend uh, this is particular way how you do it for the best results and there's like a experimental way how to do it yeah, yeah so if, if you for example not you know stand in the bus for 24 hours a day <laughs> and you still like you know doing other things so you can just use it <laughs> during the during the, that time okay so you're saying in printing into something other than water like um uh, as long as it's not a hot beverage right like orange mm -hmm. juice milk yeah, cold tea things like that. Drinks, alcohol up yeah. to 15 <laughs> up to 50 percent wow wow okay yeah i didn't think about alcohol that might be like a part of a mitigation strategy right? yeah some people it's also one group in bulgaria i think they were like doing experiments with uh, imprinting wine mm -hmm. and uh, testing the wine changes because some people are more sensitive you know sommelier yeah. etc oh actually even in uh, germany i think they have a whole winery who doing imprinting it's not like with infopathy but a little bit different uh, i mean similar wow. kind of approach but uh, just their own thing they imprint in uh all their wine after it's produced and everything so it just enhances some flavors <laughs> wow that's pretty cool and the idea with hot beverages is um it doesn't hold the 
the memory or yeah yeah because uh hot like what's heat it's when your molecules move like they have more energy move faster so they don't stay in those <clears throat> coherent domains mm. they kind of just it's become a more like chaotic environment so it doesn't hold the structure it breaks breaks down interesting with my the the two cats i think they're they're living the life because i uh I have a water fountain for them and I'll mm -hmm. do <laughs> deuterium depleted water, like five parts per million. And then I'll put that on the IC pad and then do like cell salts or <laughs> something for them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very fancy. <laughs> and sometimes I'll even, I'll do that and then I'll ozonate it sometimes and then pour it in their fountain. <laughs> so they're, <laughs> so they're going to live to like 50. Live forever. <laughs> yeah. <Our life>. yeah. <laughs> All it's an experiment cats. yeah <laughs> um i had some some listener questions do you want to go through some of those yeah, sure. uh let's see what happens if you neb nebulize the water uh that's uh it's when you kind of make a like a, a mist or a spare. yeah mist so yeah. if it's um if it's with this ultrasonic things, then we're not recommending doing that because it's also creates very, very small droplets of water. And um, for example, one coherent domain of water is about 5 uh, million uh, water molecules. And uh, if you use regular like spray bottle, that's okay. Those droplets are large and it can fit many, many of the coherent domains. But with ultrasonic nebulizers, like, we don't recommend doing that. Like pretty much don't do it here. Yeah. <laughs> just drink it right? yeah 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 drink it though i don't know like <clears throat> a regular spray bottle if it helps i don't know the, yeah. the, the tincture is probably the easiest way right because what's it, it, like you said three times a day but how many would that be like one tincture bottle a day or what kind of dose are we uh yeah if you drink regular water not uh, with added minerals or salt mm -hmm. then uh, we recommend three times a day at least two ounce uh, every time at least it's okay to drink more. You can drink a whole bottle, like you drink 25 ounce or 50 ounce of bottle. You can drink it uh, during the day, no problem. But uh, it's also important to drink more often. If you're just doing small sips during the day, that's that's very good. Okay. Yeah, I prefer the water bottle. I, I bought the tinctures and I still am trying to figure out how to use them. Yeah, for, for I just tinctures, find the water bottles easier. Yeah, yeah. tinctures is like a method number two when you create tincture with saline inside or added like more many more minerals inside you imprint it it will hold the print for 30 days so you don't need to you know imprint it every three days so you hold for 30, 30 days and then you put 10 drops or it's usually like one squeeze into the glass of water and drink the glass of water so it's how you usually like take maybe some people take supplements uh -huh. they have on the tables it's convenient yeah if you take maybe a few complexes like three complexes you have three tinctures mm -hmm. then you put uh some people even put directly if it's not like uh salt salt inside but a mineral set it to bottle then they put it just under tongue 10 drops hold it in the mouth for as long as they can and then swallow that also works uh, or like regular method you put those 10 drops in the glass of water stir it and drink it then 10 minutes later you can well, not necessarily a whole glass you can have like half glass and then 10 minutes later you from different tincture with different complex you put you, you you drink again wow is that any less is that less strong than doing the water bottle doing the the tincture mm -hmm. method or is no, it it's, it's about the same it's actually about the Less. same the efficiency okay. it's um here yeah, like we recommend to you choose the methods which is more convenient for you because also if it's more convenient for you you're going to use it for longer uh more often and it, that will give you more um like um, it, it's a bit more efficient for you hmm. wow that's pretty cool uh any way to potentiate the effects aside from reprinting yeah potentiate the effects <laughs> from it reimprinting yeah aside from from imprinting it multiple times yes ah how to make it uh stronger yeah in this way yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so <clears throat> like for sure have to shake the water bottle uh, at the beginning uh, before imprinting then um, just like drinking it more often it's pretty much and uh yeah th this is the ma main things how to make an effect stronger yeah drinking it more often okay awesome um let's see i wonder if a lot of these we already answered <laughs> um 
uh, can we replace exchange our old info pad with the new one? I would say just give the old one away, right? To some, to a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. If you like just purchase a spot, we have uh, some some discount. You can write to us and based on how many months ago you purchased a old device, we can provide some discount. Uh, how to preserve bottles when traveling or mailing them over long distance? Probably the silver and minerals, right? Would that be? Yeah, yeah. So if you <laughs> send an tincture, you can wrap it. It's important to shield it from EMF plus temp temperature fluctuation so it doesn't uh, freeze <laughs> or something. <laughs> and um, you can do that wrapping. They actually have these uh, plastic bags which have uh, metal coating on them. It's like a Ziploc bag. You can put inside the tincture you know, or you can wrap it in the aluminum foil and then wrap it in the few layers of paper for temperature insulation. Yeah, and then hope that they're not going to use some kind of very strong X-ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can ma mail a device. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't mention the circuit IC pad. Is that mm -hmm. like the the budget version? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it primarily just emitting coil. It doesn't have lights, and they have uh, less intense, like a significant less intense signal. But it can still be used. It just will take you longer to imprint, mm -hmm. and um, it will take twelve minutes. For example, compared to the, this iSpad, two minutes and circuit iSpad, 12 minutes. But it can, it can be used, of course, for imprinting water in PMF applications. That's awesome. Oh, what, one thing I almost forgot to ask, um, offline capability, I think you kind of alluded um, to it earlier. But is that something you guys, because it'd be yeah, nice yeah. to not not have to have internet to to imprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. we finally, I think also like many things started <laughs> like three years ago with development. Like this iSpad was started developing like three years ago. Yeah. And wow. uh, they yeah, changed team, developed team a few times. And uh, also started developing the app at the time. And main idea was exactly have offline uh, signals available offline. And uh, now we have that app in the like test mode. If you go oh. into, actually, yeah, Right, right now to actually access it, you need to email us, and okay. we will send you a link to the um, test community, where you will get all the details, how to download it. But it can be used already. It has some bugs, but it can be used already for downloading signals on your phone for offline use. Then you okay. go into airplane mode, or just don't have internet. You go and you navigate into downloaded uh, download section. You will see things you made available offline and use them yeah it's was oh. like many years requested feature <laughs> and now finally with app we're able to do it that's cool why not why not an app or is that in the future yeah, this timeline? Is, th no this is actual app yeah this is oh. an app. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It, it just um we still like in better testing when people testing it and uh, uh we like making sure it's like work for most people and later we release it for everyone to easily download through the app store right now it also will be downloaded like on iphone through so-called like test fly app and uh, through the google is also will be like kind of not through the app store but different way downloaded but it can be used as a regular app oh yeah. that's awesome very cool well i'm excited to uh to get the new pad and and try it out and i'm definitely going to wear it around my neck and because i'll I have so many things where I'm just laying there. Like I just got a CO2 mm -hmm. bath thing where I pump up my body like a balloon with CO2 and lay there for, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> so putting that on my chest and I'm not doing anything for an hour. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't know you have the Chinese five element programs, earth, fire, water, wood. That's, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I love so... stuff like that and, and the flower essences. I love the just the mm -hmm. emotional, mental mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I think over those three years, we also added maybe almost 2,000 new ICs. So it was, I think, wow. about 1,000. Now it's about 3,000. Wow. There's some crazy ones like uh, what Ben Greenfield stem cells, right? It's yeah. one, <laughs> one option. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he mailed his stem cells. <laughs> I don't know. That's a little freaky. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, yeah, there's a one research how they were transmitting like imprinting i think uh, chicken to no duck to chicken so some of the cells from the uh, to from duck to chicken egg 
uh -huh. and then chickens were born with you know between their fingers i don't know how this thing's called oh, yeah. the web uh, stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this yeah. thing's not as big as the actual duck but there were yeah. presence of this wow. morphological changes wow yeah, so, I... <laughs> somebody were imprinted there like <laughs> pregnant wife <laughs> Live chicken. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. Well, wow. well, I, I still have chickens. I don't have goats anymore, but I should do more experiments with like uh, egg production. And I mean, I think I was giving them deuterium depleted water, but I think the main thing is just keeping things clean to me. So, <laughs> like, I used to have, I think, colloidal silver a little bit and stuff, but it would be fun to see if I can increase egg production with imprints in their water. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But awesome, man, Todd. Well, this was a this was a great round too. We have to to keep this going because I feel like each time I have new questions, and I think the more people hear about it, I didn't get that many listener questions just because I don't think people uh, are that aware of it. Like we said, there's just so many <laughs> devices out there for water that it's kind of overwhelming. They just mm. kind of lump them all into the same category. Where uh, I think yours is just so different from all the rest, and it has the I mean, go to, uh, I'd recommend people go to the website, infopathy.com and, and click on, uh, was it, uh, publications and mm -hmm. like, like read the articles yeah. and the, the videos. And I mean, some of it's yeah. over my head. It gets complex and quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like, sometimes it's like, we want to make it like simpler, but because we want to make it like a Swiss knife, pretty much of, uh, all the informational uh, how to call it, like, therapeutic technologies. I'd say, you know, we want to add this and this and uh, things getting complex, but yeah, we want to get, because we see what people like doing in general, what is developments, how there was technologies, and we kind of want to make it, yeah, one of our like missions to make it also affordable for people. So it's not those like 5,000 devices, like for like one with one frequency or something specific. It's, um, many applications yeah make it pretty much as a swiss knife mm. swiss army knife <laughs> <laughs> is it is there any print like as far as uh like pemf that you would recommend if someone's like on an airplane or in mm. like a intense emf environment yeah like to, yeah i think it, we actually to keep the body stuff. like instead of wearing emf clothing is there a yeah, a few days. yeah. By default, the IC itself will not shield you from anything because it's also EMF. So strengthening. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's cannot like make you, you know, like a bubble around you or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, uh, it can make you uh, be, you know, to recover faster from EMF or be protected. You like be, be yeah, make your body more stronger against the EMF. And uh, one of the developed ICs was um, uh, 5G EMF oh. protection. Interesting. So that one, and uh, yeah, I think that may be more suitable actually, for airplane. Oh, interesting. Wow. Now for airplane, yeah, we just only have things like to jet lag. Or do all the nutrients, vitamin C and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, the, those things. I love just all the applications of Infopathy. It's kind of endless. So it's... Yeah, well, like electromagnetic smoke protection that can be used. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see that one also there. As, a, as an imprint, yeah, imprint the water and then drinking it. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and also encourage people to go to community page and then they have a section of experiences. Mm -hmm. You can search through something or just scroll down and see. But yeah, we'll need to scroll a long time. You can just search. Yeah, it also was like one of my dreams one like one day ago to have like thousand reviews from people of using etc now we like close to 1400 that's great and wow. like it's uh i think the best when people like you know write in the feedback how it's helping them yeah that's exciting yeah i really appreciate what you've done and um like i said it's it's definitely by far my top um water device that i've used and i just love everything about it so thank you very much uh, for support yeah yeah thanks anton I'll, I'll put the link below where you guys could check out um the the pad and the hummer and the new the new ic pad when's that actually going to release for the for public use uh the new no pad. so now it's available for pre-order and we'll be start shipping in uh, april this year oh <laughs> oh that's great yeah, yeah that should be 
like that should only be two or three weeks after the show comes out so yeah yeah, yeah. like we thought it's going to be like last year but there's so many de like delays and uh need to be fixed fixes so for one year i was keep saying it's going to be released in, in two months <laughs> I was yeah. like, so i was so upset it's keep delaying that that's been my experience with my life it's like what you think is going to take three months takes double or triple yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks, Anton. Uh, stick around as, as we close out the show. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I really think this infopathy technology is a game changer, especially if you're someone that travels a lot. I know that when I leave my home base of Idaho and I stop drinking my filtered spring water, and I start imbibing bottled water, whether it's at an airport or out at a restaurant. And I think it's beyond just the minerals in it. Because you think about it, if you're in a population dense area, as I mentioned to Anton, I went to a wastewater treatment facility, the one in San Diego. And it's really insane the amount of processing it goes through. But it would make sense that homeopathic contaminants like energetic contaminants would not be filtered out and to me that's where this infopathy technology really shines i mean that's my favorite experiment to do even more than the blind taste test with infopathy take it with you when you're traveling and their new unit that i have here that they have on pre-order the ic pad version three it's just a standalone unit. You don't even need the audio cable. So it's easy to throw in your purse or your backpack or whatever and just use the Bluetooth function. I really love bringing their IC pad to the airport and dosing, whether it's Icelandic water or the best water that I could find at the airport. I find it makes a huge difference. And you might be wondering, oh, it's just once or twice. But if you add it up, over a year or especially over a lifetime, that's a lot of water to be ingesting that has most likely chaotic information inside of it. I know when I do that to the water, I just feel calmer on my trip as I'm traveling. So if you've never experienced it, but you're intrigued, you can definitely order their V2, their current IC pad, which works great. I use that for the last couple of years. And then you could also pre-order their new one. That's what I would do if I was just getting into this, at least so I can get started. And then just give that one to a friend or a family member when you get the version three. If you read through a lot of the testimonials on their website of the different imprints, you have to be consistent, as Anton said. So it's really two to three months of the same program, ideally. I've been doing that with the 12 cell salts. I was inspired by Robert Selig that I had on the show. I've also been playing with the five elements PEMF program on my chest. And then at some point, I'll probably get into the flower essences, which is probably something that people don't think about with this device is using it as a tool for mental and emotional transformation. For example, there's an imprint called Calm and Clear Remedy. And each one has a description. And this one says, it may be used to find time for oneself to relax, to unwind and enjoy peaceful activities. It may help achieve inner relaxation and encourage feelings of calmness and clarity. This infoceutical was created with the help of the flower essences, black-eyed Susan, Barania, bottle brush, bush, fuchsia, croea, jacaranda, little flannel flower, and pawpaw. So it could even be a combination of several flower essences. And that's where I think this technology gets really powerful because I don't know anybody that doesn't need that program. Everybody's stressed out. And the more we can do to stack things in our favor to chill out our nervous system and relax, the better. So why not use your IC pad, maybe the PEMF function on your body while you have the red light going if you're just sitting there on a phone call or watching a movie or something. 
to me, that's a big part of health optimization. Think about how many people just sit there just staring at a screen and not doing anything for their health where there's really a million things that you could do. Rife technology, red light, as I mentioned, PEMF at the same time. So you're actually getting something done. And of course, there's something to be said of just not doing anything and totally vegging out. But I think that could become a slippery slope where we do that much too often. So I like just being more disciplined and combining therapies as much as I possibly can. If you want to check out Infopathy, it's infopathy.com. It is a membership. You can either pay monthly for 10 bucks a month, or I pay yearly for a little over $8 a month. And if you click on equipment, that's where you could see their different products. So as I mentioned, the two versions of the glowing IC pad and my discount code Blackburn actually stacks with the sale that they're having right now. So if you really want to just dip your toe in, as Anton mentioned, the circuit IC pad just requires a longer imprint time, but for 65 bucks or less, you can get going. I highly recommend just paying a little more for the glowing IC pad, which is the one that I used for a couple of years. And as I mentioned, I would pre-order and get that one if you just want to get going because this is truly transformational and I love sharing it with my family and friends. And just to clarify, if you didn't get it from the show, the Glowing IC Pad version 3 contains the PEMF function in it. So you don't necessarily need the IC Hummer if you're just going to be using their newest version IC Pad in the future. As I said in the show, I love their water bottle. It's the large IC capsule for 50 bucks. It's a 25 ounce. And I ozonate the bottle intermittently. And every time I fill it up, I always imprint it for a minimum of six minutes. I'll usually just put it on infinite and walk away and take a shower or do something that takes several minutes so that I don't even have to think about it. And I come back and I have a strong solution. My website is matt hyphen blackburn.com. You can read about my CLF protocol. And if you click the shop tab, you can see all of my recommended products, most of which have discount codes. And these are supplements and tools that I've been using for over a decade in some cases. It's a great place to shop for friends and family for birthdays and holidays. If you go to mitolife.co, that's my company a lot of different products on there. Uh, started with supplements and then branched out to grounding sheets, shampoo and conditioner, even a seven stage drinking water filter. A lot of really exciting things to come in that water section of the MitoLife site. We're currently working on a really cool shower filter that is unlike anything else on the market. We are currently having a surplus sale. So when you go to the shop and the wellness tab, you can see about half the products are on sale. So if you've been curious to try some, now is a good time. The Encephalon and Jellyfish collagen products are a great one-two punch that I take every night after dinner. And then before bed every night, I actually take four capsules of my melatonin, the Super Strength which is the 50 milligram. And I've talked about why on the Mito Life Academy. That's my YouTube channel. It's 15 bucks a month. And you gain access to the last two to three years of content. Me talking about different healing protocols and supplements. Melatonin is one of the most misunderstood. It's so powerful. And in my mind, it's really safe and has so many different effects acting on heavy metals, lowering lipofuscin accumulation in the brain, just so many things that goes on and on when you get into the benefits of melatonin. Highly recommend checking out the work of Russell Ryder. He has a great book on melatonin and also lectures if you just search his name on YouTube. So that's all for this week. I'll see you guys 
next Friday. Stay supercharged.